Hey, hey we're St Phoenix and we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Recently, I was talking to Cameron from Twin XL who mentioned that he was working with you guys and said you have to listen to them. So I did and I was stuck on that debut album. Like it was, I mean, it still is on repeat. So um, talk to me a little bit about the band and just like the creative process between the two of you guys and how you guys learn to balance and create the sound that you do. Well, for one, check out to Cameron, good friend of us. The man with the magical hair. Yeah, he's got crazy <laughs> hair, but yeah. he's a good guy. Um, yeah, we just, um, so um, that was our first album we released last year, just before the... And I guess that was the culmination and build-up of, you know, where we'd been in the band, uh, with, you know, four years or three years, pre three and a half years previously to releasing that. It was just... Um, it's the story of a journey of, of two guys in a band, two brothers in a band. Um, so we decided to to put the album into two halves, but there was a, a light side and a dark side. So the lighter side was a bit more, um, you know, poppy, I would say, and the, the darker was a bit more alternative. Um, and that reflected on the message and the lyrics and the songs, and also, you know, the, the style sonically. Um, because, we, you know, the, the kind of sound that we've got is kind of diverse. One... You've got a song in the first album, like um, Up to the Stars, it's the last song on it. And then you've got a song like Scream, which are the kind of polar opposite. So that's what we wanted to try and create, um, you know, a world where, uh, you know, a world of opposites. That was the whole idea. I really loved that you guys can pretty much uh, give us different emotions throughout this record. Um, and, you know, for me personally, Death to Me was one of the songs that really stuck out to me. Um, more importantly, the the screams that you kind of do, like the chant kind of uh, screams that you have on there. So when you guys were creating this song in particular, like what did you guys already know that this was going to be the sound uh, for the song? Or did you guys feel like during the writing process, the, the, the song, the sound of the song was kind of coming to life? The, the funny thing is, Rob, Stevie um, Stevie ended up in hospital, um, and that song nearly killed him. <laughs> yeah, wow. that, that's, that's, that's what the song was about, because yeah. we were making the album, and uh, I was just stressed out and not feeling good, and he ended up going to hospital just um, because, just because, yeah, staying up all night and trying to finish things and not sleeping and drinking and... Um, yeah, just not taking care of yourself. And that song was about um, we love music and, you know, we, you know, you're doing something, doing something you love so much till it kills you. That's what that song's about. That, I mean, that, that this, the whole album was about that. This, this yeah. um, or the whole song was about that. This will be the death of me. Um, but in terms of the sound, we had the song written and then the the scream part was just about how you feel and this, this will mm. be the death of me. You screamed it out and, you know, doing it in the in the in the vocal booth, it just came out and it kind of worked, and we just put it on the track. Wow! So this this song was almost too literal. <laughs> that that's a little scary. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but it just goes to show you, man, what music's a powerful thing. Definitely. Right. Right. So let's jump in and talk about the new single, which is your debut with Atlantic Records. Um, first of all, how did this this new partnership with Atlantic happen? Did you guys reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? Like, what was that whole experience like for you guys? Well, it's been a, a long uh, a long road since we released the first album. Um, we went straight. Into, um, we had pretty much. You know, we couldn't get out and play live and we had mm. tours cancelled, so we thought we'd just go on and make another record and, and make more music. But we didn't have any place to go because all the studios were shut down and, you know, our houses didn't have an extra room, so there was no real place to, to make a studio. And um, a while back, our dad got diagnosed with a, a terminal condition. And uh, But before he, he passed away, his dream was to build a house for our mum. And... Uh, he built the house, and on the house he had a garage, and um, they had a, the garage had a room upstairs, uh, which we're in just now. 
and he said, why don't you just make the, the garage into a studio, which we did. And um, so we spent the whole of 2020 in this um, this studio making making records and making music. Uh, and through that period, our dad's health started to decline, where it got to a stage in November, December, where he had to go to hospital. And um, we were inspired to write the lyrics for the song. Mm. And... Um, you know, to cut a long story short, through the process of him being in hospital and he stayed in hospital and passed away, we took that inspiration and made it into a song. And luckily, the night that we finished the song, um, we got the call to go to hospital to say our last goodbyes with him. So wow. we got to um, we got to play the song to him before he passed away. And um, it was just the next day, um, I we spoke to a manager to say... You know, like I said, I didn't know if you knew this, but we were writing a song about a dad and about the experience of losing him. And we got to play it to him before he passed away. And my manager said, you know, send me, you haven't sent me this. So we sent it to him. And then, um, yeah, I think he showed it to, to Pete Gambarg at Atlantic and he loved it. And then, you know, right away, you know, here we are. Um, wow. The release is out and, you know, we're talking to you. So it's been a pretty surreal, crazy time. I love that you know, you were able to create, you were able to see a different perspective with this song, uh, just because, you know, finding your happy place and you found your dad's happy place and, um, like the story behind it as well. Like how was that writing process for you guys being that you guys were going through that situation as you were writing these lyrics? Yeah, it was, it was very tough. Um, we couldn't, we, you know, so I went into the house um, when we had finished the song, and he, my dad, was going through, or our dad, sorry, was going through a hard time, and we just caught him at a moment where he was sitting on his couch. He was looking out to when you look out the window of the house, you can see all these beautiful hills. So he was just sat and he looked at peace, and he looked like he was. Um, just casting his worries away and I took those lyrics into the studio and made the chorus and we loved it but, but uh, we just couldn't write the verses because the verses were going to be about our dad passing away and we mm. just thought it was too raw and too real that we didn't want to finish it. It wasn't until our dad was in hospital he asked us, you know, we were FaceTiming him when he just went in initially and he said, how's the music going? And we said, we can't do any music, we, we miss you and we think about you too much and we're not even thinking about music and he said you've got to finish your music you've got to get this done wow. so he told us to get it finished it and um that's kind of the bridge of the song uh has his words to us when um he was in hospital just just keep going don't stop and yeah we managed to do it and as i said the night we managed to finish that um was the, was the the time we, we had to say our last goodbyes to him wow Wow. And like, given the time that you guys are going through this and, and, you know, in the recording process, as far as the drums go, you have this emotion, this anger inside you because of what's going on. How do you not, how do you not go crazy with the drums with this track? Just like your previous album where there's different ranges of tones and music and how do you keep it so subtle the way that you did for this record? I think the, um, the song, you know, it's all about it's a march. That's the, the the whole process. This is an emotional war. That's why we're dressed in the uniforms and we've got the the marching mm. drum um, and the march snare. It's it's all about carrying the energy um, of just organic sounds. Um, and I think that's probably what best suits the song uh, for Happy Place. Now, as far as you guys writing the song together and producing it together, um, what kind of challenges aside from what was going on with your father? What kind of challenges did you guys face in the writing process of this track or even in the recording process? Just being in a band with someone who you really dislike. <laughs> being someone who you don't like is, is, is tough. But it's fortunate your brothers are stuck together. So, you know, that's always a challenge. Um, but, um, you know, we've been... Um, we're brothers, we're best friends, but you know, before music we used to work together, we were in previous bands before, so 
you know, with the downs of um, fighting and arguing, it's also a chance to be real and honest and get straight to the point. And, you know, there's no harm and no, no hurt feelings. And that's kind of the beauty of, of doing that um, uh, when we're in the studio. How would you say you guys challenge each other? Um, one with being better at vocals and the other with being better in the drums or being more creative with the drums? Well, Stevie, Stevie's got a lot of weaknesses. No, um, no, no, no. And what, what he lacks, I make up for him. Um, <laughs> probably say that. Rob, you don't actually know this, but I'm actually a drummer. I, the reason why I started drumming was because of me. And, um, no, you know, no, I, no, I, no, 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 no. Let me finish. Rob's <laughs> asked my question. I'm finish the question. Um, and during our live set, um, there's a couple of songs that I jump on the drums and play the drums. And when when I jump on the drums, the set just comes alive, man. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so he's always got that fear, you know, on the back of his mind. He vanished. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. The reason I started playing drums was because Stevie is so bad at playing the drums, I picked up the sticks and said, listen, this is how you do it. So I showed him how to play the drums. He showed me how not to play the I'm drums. Not, uh, I'm not very good at the old vocals, so I, um, I no. stick to drums, stick yeah. to the back of the stage. Yeah, but either way, we, we like to have a bit of um, a bit of, a bit of trash talk to keep each other's, um, you know, to get get the best out of each other. That's that's what brothers do. Yeah, it brings the best out of you guys. Absolutely. Um, where does Cameron? come in into this situation is is he working on new material is he working on was he working on previous material like what is that relationship so um be, well before the album i used to go to la um and do some songwriting do some writing trips and i met jordan and cameron um and we wrote a song called sorry uh that's on the first album together and then um we wrote a other couple of songs, and then we just only time. Then Alan started coming to to oh, LA. Just, no, you were there sort of that time. Yeah. Yes, but before previously, I'd run a couple of songs just yeah. just by chance meeting Cameron, and then Alan started going to LA, and then Alan came and we wrote Sorry, and then from there, you know, we've done a couple of more LA trips, and and Cameron's always been there, and you know, we've, we've maybe wrote about five or six songs and we've, we did one last week we're going to do some more he's just a great guy he just he just gets it he's very I fast think, and i think we click really we good click, yeah click very well i think it's a lot easier doing it with uh with guys that understand what you're trying to sing about they can relate mm. to some of the experiences and they're just they're just great great dudes man yeah now let's jump in and talk about the music video because the music video for happy place is so cinematic um you guys seem it seems like you guys went all out with the production so for you guys personally like what was that experience like uh during the filming process but also like how involved were you in the creative process of of the music video um just like any any video we, we are um you've involved uh, massively in all the creative process we've got a vision what we want to do and then you know our last videos with um for the first album, it's the same guy, kind of called Stuart Alexander. He, we always like to, to create cinematic uh, worlds, and um, he's the best at doing that. So we go to him with an idea, and then you know he kind of takes the idea and, and takes it to the next level. And also, Rob, Stevie, um, Stevie almost died. So see you on the see you on the hill when we're playing. Um, yeah, I, I almost I show. almost die a lot, Rob. <laughs> we. We were down on the platform on the hill just below, and yeah. Stuart, uh, Stuart's flying the drone, and he's like, "Can you guys climb up? Can you guys climb up the cliff in the mountain edge and just get up higher?" So Stevie starts, <laughs> Stevie starts climbing up, and I swear to God, about an inch away from dying, he fell off the side of the cliff, and oh on the God. side of the cliff was like easy a thousand foot top. Oh my oh God! Yeah, how much? But. You know, Rob, I'm badass. I am badass, man. I can't think doesn't face me, man. I'm rock and roll. <laughs> you, I mean, death to me is, con is continues to just play a really ro a big role in the band. So. 
<laughs> you just got to start you got to start hiring paramedics for your like whole band team when you guys go on tour. <laughs> okay, watch go and watch what I'm doing. Um but no, we um <laughs> we like to get involved with everything. We were there, you know, helping out with the makeup and um you know, with all the extras and all the wash, we, we like to be involved with, with all of that. So, um, and then the editing process, you know, we like to be there for that. And um, it's kind of our edit at the end as well. So, um, yeah, we, we're, we're full on when it comes to the creative process of the video. That's amazing. Well, I love I love this new track. Like I said, I keep playing this this uh, debut album. Um, so I'm super excited for you guys and, and super excited that you guys signed with Atlantic and uh, looking forward to definitely more tours and more opportunities with, with the band. Uh, before we do wrap up, I'm curious, did you create a leather jacket for DDMN? Uh, yeah, um, that happened with, um, we went into a young blood. I, I can tell you what happened, Rob. <laughs> I got my own jacket made. I'll get tattoos, right? So hold I'm on, Rob, tattoos. I but, started you know, asking a question. Hold on, Chop. So I got a jacket made that was, had a design on the back from a tattoo artist, and it said St. Phoenix. And Stevie was so jealous that I got this jacket made. He's like, can you please ask, can you please ask no. him to do one for me? Can That's you please happened. ask him to do one for me? <laughs> That's, not what happened. That's not what happened at all. That's true. Do you wear a leather jacket? Was a question at you? The question was, was it me, the guy with the leather jacket? <laughs> what happened was, Very good. you see, um, it was kind of we wanted to take the album on stage. We started touring with Young Blood, and we were just kind of wearing normal clothes. Well, I had another leather jacket on, and we weren't kind of mad. We were just, you know, playing um, with just normal kind of clothes on, and and Young Blood had everything sort of uniform and kind of and, and just yeah. different and it looked really cool and we thought we need to we really need to up our game here and we were at that stage we were trying to formulate the the creative for the album and that all clicked we were actually playing a gig in um it was the roxy in la and that's when i thought, uh, started to draw on the jacket and that to be fair alan had a t tattoo artist and he had he had some drawings on his jacket <laughs> um <laughs> And then <laughs> I, I I did I had the coolest jacket and Steve was like, Oh man, please please get me make me one, please get me make one. Anyway, so anyway. Listen, just I'll let him talk for you just let him talk. You like to talk. And then we and then we I guess from the Roxy show, I was like um, in July two years ago, we started to to um you know, do more of that and then fans were coming to the shows with their leather jackets and or jackets with drawings on them and and it just it gave a, a good um, a, a relation to the album cover being black and white. That's what we wanted to try and create. So, um, long story short, I created the jacket myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was hoping there was merch. I just I just got my a new All Saints jacket in the mail a couple of days ago. So I was like, that's a good idea. I need a I need to add some uh, some Saint Phoenix on there. <laughs> Make it, make it, make it custom, man. That's what you got. Yeah, to do. exactly, exactly. Awesome, guys. Well, congratulations with the signing and the success of the new single. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank Thanks, you, Rob. Really appreciate it, Rob. Thank you.